Got vanilla bean scraps? I'm going to show you how to give them a whole new life because let's face it, vanilla beans are expensive. Here's how you can make the most of them. The first thing I normally do when I have vanilla bean scraps is add them to my jar of homemade vanilla extract. If I have scraps from the extract, I'll add those to a new batch. But since the ones I'm using have already lived the extract life, they're going to get stretched even further since they've been marinating in their own vanilla goodness for months. Do you know what's easier than sticking vanilla pods in a jar of extract? Dumping them in a container of sugar and giving them a shake. Let them sit in there for a couple of weeks and just like that you'll have a beautiful and easy vanilla sugar to add to coffee, tea, and baked goods where the sugar will really shine, like shortbread or sugar cookies. You can do the same thing with salt if you want to have a special finishing salt for desserts. Do you like vanilla lattes? Make your own at home on the cheap with a homemade vanilla syrup. It's better than anything you can get at the store and has zero additives. Bring a cup of sugar and a cup of water to a quick boil just until the sugar is completely dissolved. Add your vanilla bean scraps and let it infuse for a day or two, refrigerated. Try to use the syrup within a month. I love it in London fogs, matcha lattes, and as a syrup to moisten sponge cakes, like the Genoise I'll link in the show notes. Here's an easy iced matcha latte you can make with that vanilla syrup. Add around a cup of milk, a teaspoon of matcha powder, and your favorite adaptogen for some old fashioned herbalistic fun. I'm using ashwagandha for its many benefits. Pour in a couple of teaspoons of syrup or more to taste and then blend it with ice. I often add a raw egg and collagen for extra nutrition. It's one of my favorite afternoon snacks. If you have some fresh orange peels lying around, why not make a quick and natural air freshener with those vanilla bean scraps? Stovetop potpourri is simple. Throw everything in a pot with some water and let it simmer. Toss in whatever you think will smell good, like cinnamon and cloves. Your kitchen will smell divine. Looking for a simple yet elegant dessert? Use your vanilla beans for poaching fruit. This is a method I learned from Samin Nasrat in her iconic book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, which I'll link below. Start off by bringing wine, sugar, a small strip of lemon zest, your scraps, and a pinch of salt, this is where vanilla salt would come in handy, to a boil. You'll want four cups of wine and one and a third cup of sugar for every two pounds of fruit, whether that's peaches, pears, apples, plums, or quince. Bring it to a simmer and add the fruit, covering the lot with a round of parchment with a hole in the middle to let the steam out. The goal is to simmer until the fruit is tender, which you can test by piercing it with a paring knife. Some fruits have a short simmer time, like apricots and others like quince need a couple of hours. After the fruit is out, boil the poaching liquid until it's syrupy and use it to drizzle over the poached fruit. I love this dessert with vanilla ice cream, but it's also delectable with creme fraiche, honeyed ricotta, or Greek yogurt. I love this dessert. It's easy to make and it's delicious. Speaking of ice cream, you can use your vanilla bean scraps to make a good old-fashioned vanilla ice cream. Begin by beating eight egg yolks and a three-quarter cup of sugar together until the yolks take on an ivory color. Heat three cups of cream in a heavy bottom saucepan over medium-low heat, being careful not to scorch it. I'm using half and half because it's hard to find real cream. Most of the stuff you find in stores is full of fillers, stabilizers, and other additives. <laughs> the list is actually pretty scary and I try not to buy it. When the cream begins to simmer, 
add a ladle full of milk, or cream rather, into the egg mixture and whisk it. This process is called tempering, which just makes sure that the eggs don't get shocked and curdle when they meet the heat. So adding the cream one ladle full at a time tempers the eggs and makes them ready for the next step. Once the yolks are tempered, pour the lot into the pot and stir over medium low heat until it's thick enough that when you run a finger over your spoon, it stays there. At this point, remove the mix from the heat, pour into a container and add those spent vanilla pods and let it cool before refrigerating it, letting it infuse overnight. And then if you want to, you can strain it, definitely remove the vanilla bean pods, and then pour it into an ice cream maker machine the next day for a really delicious old fashioned vanilla ice cream. Now, if making your own ice cream is too much of a hassle, here's the easiest suggestion on the list. Add it to a pot of tea. My votes go to Earl Grey, rooibos, and red raspberry leaf. What kind would you blend your vanilla with? We've already talked about infusing vanilla in cream, simple syrup, and tea, but the train doesn't need to stop there. I'm a big fan of fermenting. It's the kind of old-fashioned skill I think everyone should try their hand at, which is why I think vanilla bean scraps would be an excellent candidate to add to a second ferment. Whether it's for water kefir, kombucha, or milk kefir, which is what I'm making here, vanilla will make a lovely flavor addition. If you're not ready to explore fermentation, then consider infusing regular milk with it for a playful twist. The last one we'll talk about today is less about food and more about beauty. If you're the kind of person who likes vanilla scented bath products, this is for you. I'm making a vanilla shea body butter and began by infusing an organic extra virgin olive oil with a few spent vanilla beans for roughly a week. I'm such a sucker for clean bath products and this one makes such a lovely homemade gift. After the vanilla has had some time to infuse the oil, strain the oil, leaving the specks to make the lotion more interesting. From there, add half a cup of shea butter and a quarter cup of the infused oil to a glass or ceramic bowl and heat them up over a water bath until the shea has melted. Pop the bowl in the fridge to cool it down and harden a bit at which point it's time to whip it. Adding one tablespoon of arrowroot powder, which can be substituted with cornstarch, cuts down on the grease, and vitamin E oil not only helps to further moisturize, it also preserves the product. It's optional. I have it on hand because I make nearly all of my skincare products, which saves me a ton of money, and also ensures that I know exactly what I'm putting on my skin. It is our largest organ after all. One thing to note is that the vanilla fragrance is subtle, so you won't be left smelling like a baked good. If you like a stronger vanilla smell, then adding several drops of vanilla essential oil wouldn't be amiss. So there you have it. I just shared eight different ways to put those vanilla bean scraps to work. So I hope one of them inspires you let me know which one is your favorite or which one excites you most and if you've never made your own vanilla extract before be sure to check out this tutorial video until next time <laughs>